Hello, welcome to All Things Maya. My name is Maya, and we'll go, we're going over a review of The Great British Show and Bee. It is season eight, it's episode six, and it is music week, which is absolutely great. I love music. So we'll go straight into the pattern challenge. And the pattern challenge this week was the parka. That is, was unexpected, you know, challenge, but the challenges are getting difficult, more difficult each season um so it was a parker this time they had 4.5 hours to do it and we got seven parkas at the end so on a scale of one to five i would probably say my fear level for this particular project would be a three i'm pretty neutral on it i think that i could do it with enough time not 4.5 hours but i could certainly pull it off i think and it would be um something that would it doesn't scare me too much to try it and so um then with the judge's expectations for the parka though that's where you start to get a little scary they want precision it's like precision 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 they want precise channels they want the pockets lined up they want the placket lined up and judge um, patrick actually says that he thinks this is the one of the hardest challenges pattern challenges that they've set yet so and i don't know last week's was pretty bad but I, I tend to agree that this is pretty difficult so um out of all of the ch contestants jill um ran straight to the fabric closet and picked out a fabric that was slippery that she ended up using a walking foot for um she had the zip front opening causing uh the zip front opening caused multiple struggles for all of the contestants or most of the contestants the um it was one of those examples though where people were trying to be helpful and i felt so bad because um man he was trying to be helpful she's like i got this figured out and then it turned out that what she thought she had done right was wrong and then she'd shown other people how to do it so they'd also done it wrong so everyone's scrambling in the end to tr sort of fix the zipper thing um um, in the end, Angela ended up having to redo her, undo her zip guard at the last minute. And she also missed one of the flaps that go on the, um, one of the flaps that go on the inside of the guard. Um, and then there was just a lot and lot of overall stress for the parkas in the end. As far as the comments on the parka, uh, the judges liked Christian's choice of fabric and he th they thought his zip was well done but his channel that goes around the parka came over too far on one side. Manny had a lot of raw edges on the front of the packet and the um and they said that the overall raw edges detracted from the overall look of it. Rogan's pockets were well sewn. They said it looked like she did the fishtail well and she just had an overall good sewing job. Deborah's pockets were neat. Her channels were spaced. Um, she did miss the front flap of the pocket and she had a snap missing. A snap seemed to be the downfall of a lot of people when it comes to sewing in, these, in this competition. Um, Angela's fishtail was done well, but her snap wasn't done properly. The, sorry, that was Annie. Annie's fishtail was done well, but her snap was not done properly. Angela's fishtail was neat, but she didn't have a waist cord. Her zip was messy and the zip guard didn't uh, match up to the top. So, and then Jill, um, you know, she was really steady on at the beginning. She ended up with an uneven placket. The pockets um, weren't on neat, the pockets were on neatly, but there was no snap, no cord, and there was no hem on the inside of the sleeves. So in the end, it uh, Jill came in seventh place, Angela came in sixth, um, Brogan took first place and Christian was right behind in second. There was only a few little things, d details that were missed. And we see that more and more with the competition as it goes on. Um, so after watching this, I think that I'm probably a little more interested in, in the concept of doing a parka. Just because I feel like it's a good challenge for me. Um, it I feel like it's a step above on my particular sewing skill level. Um, so it would be a good challenge and it would really help stretch my skills and probably test my patience a little bit. So on to the transformation challenge, which of course they have 90 minutes to, to um, fulfill. 
in the transformation challenge they are get they're being given a bunch of old denims and shirts and they're supposed to be changing into a stage outfit for a country music star um in this particular this is one of those particular transformation challenges where they can only use those items they can't go into the haberdashery and get more fabric or trims or um any of those anything that to add to it they can only use the denims and shirts that were provided and then they also were provided with some add-on sequins uh patches appliques things like that so my initial thoughts on on the making of an outfit would be to take the top line of the of an a shirt or um, button down shirt and make that yoke across the top um, filled with all kinds of sequins or glitter or appliques something that's going to really stand it from the top up and then on the matching bottom I would have added like details to the pocket specifically like if there were jeans or if they were uh, shorts or the skirts in in this particular situation i would have gone in and added like the appliques or the fringes or things like that to the pockets to accentuate it and make that match what was going on on the top of the protect that particular outfit um so jill ended up doing a frilled skirt and a halt a halter top and christian ended up doing a yellow bra com like tube top style combo with a fringe skirt Man Yi used a flared pair of jeans as sleeves on a jacket and I thought that was really kind of brilliant. That was taking a step out of making a, a step away from doing the process of sleeves by using the what you already had and turning them into sleeves. Uh, in terms of out of the boxes, I really think that using the flare jeans as sleeves was really taking a, was taking a chance and was really outside of what you would expect to see. Uh, but I also noticed that Brogan, when she was doing the challenge, used a shirt and turned it into a skirt instead of uh, using jeans or anything like that. A lot of people were using jeans, turning them into skirts, or uh, she used a shirt instead. So I was personally drawn to Jill's and Christian's product uh, transformation challenges. I feel like it really read country music to me with the frills and the and the patches and the the shiny, but I also feel like it wasn't really a country music singer outfit like on stage. It was more like I'm going to a country music concert. I'm dressing up. This is what I want to look like. So I thought that that was they did a really good job though and. Jill actually ended up taking first place in the transformation challenge. So it was kind of a down one challenge, up the other next challenge. So in the made to measure, um, they got 5.5 hours to make a David Bowie inspired outfit, which was really interesting. I think that I had a really high excitement level when I heard this, um, probably around a four out of five, just because David Bowie was is still an icon and he has a lot of range in terms of as they said 50 years of music experience and so he has a lot of range in terms of what the fashion of the decade is and what you know he had what he was his ability to your ability to pull from those different decades plus he stretched gender so he didn't conform himself to just wearing jeans and a suit. He wore whatever he wanted. So I thought about it for a little while and I was trying to figure out what I would make if it was me. And I realized that I love the idea of making this challenge. It is really exciting for me. However, <laughs> I know of David Bowie. I'm not a David Bowie fan. So I haven't listened to his music. I know that he's an icon. After listening to what they said, I know that he's got 50 years of music experience that um, expand across 50 years. But I'm just not deeply invested in him. So I don't know what I would personally make in this challenge. I just know that he was a fashion and music icon, um, which is extremely exciting because that gives you a wide range of creative uh variations that you go, can go with. 
So in the particular challenge, the contestants, Deborah decided to make a trouser suit, suit uh, from the, with an ostrich collar. The collar um, is removable and it has, the ostrich collar has ostrich feathers on it. That's why I called it a collar, ostrich collar. Manny decides to make an oversized print jacket. It is tailored and she also does a tulle skirt with it. Christian's making a cat suit. It's single arm, single leg, and it has a cape. Capes are exciting. Who doesn't love a cape? And then Annie is making an asymmetrical blazer dress. Angela's making a coat dress. Brogan is making a Bowie-inspired party dress, which is one of those things that it shows exactly what I mean by creativity. She didn't go for one specific look. She went for a combination of looks that read Bowie. And then Jill is made a lapel party dress with an underskirt that's supposed to represent flames, um, reminiscent to one of Bowie's uh, iconic outfits. So in the comments with Annie's, they love the fabric. They love that it was double breasted and they said it was, they love the asymmetrical fit and, and said that the fit itself was good. With Christians, they said the cape was very dramatic, but it was tight in the bum area. And um, they did say he finished it pretty neatly. I thought it was really cute because he said, I, I made an outfit and I tried it on myself last night and it was a little tight, but I figured your body shapes a little differently. Oh, that didn't work out as well as he thought it would. So um, you never know when you're making something to fit someone else. The judges said that Jill's outfit felt very Bowie, that it was eye-catching, that they, they were happy that she did the rough edges on them but that they would have preferred the dress be a little bit shorter so that you could see the tool going all the way around. Deborah, they liked that the collar was separate and that they, um, it accentuated the ostrich feathers accentuated the fabric itself, but they said that they thought the fit of the top was really good. With broken, they liked the fabric and the pleated sleeves on, um, but they said with the fringing like under the arms, that you should either go big with the fringing or not do the fringing at all. Another example of go big or go home. Uh, and David Bowie was that kind of guy. He went big or he went home. And he was around for a while, so, you know. Manny, um, they were impressed by the fact that she made a tailored jacket, but she said that, but they said that the, it was an 80s style and that it was just not big enough, that the shoulders didn't read as big enough, it didn't read as 80 style, and that in the end, the skirt and the shirt actually diminished from the overall look um, and took away from the jacket. And then with Angela, they liked the shape and the fit, but her princess seams weren't executed very well, and they thought that it the print itself, the fabric that she chose did not really remind them of David Bowie. So, um, I think that overall, I liked Jill's and Deborah's outfits. Deborah's feels very stylish. It feels like the kind of thing that you could wear to a, a kind of formal dinner, maybe high-end fashion show formal dinner. And Jill's, to me, felt like something you could, like, go to a prom in or to a ball and wear as a, a more formal party outfit. And I really like both of those particular outfits for those particular reasons. Um, as far as would I be interested in trying this, the, the David Bowie inspired outfit or really any music artist inspired outfit, I think there's a large array of creativity when you're looking for inspiration from people such as David Bowie. I think that can work out really well in an outfit and it really just in, in this particular situation it really makes me want to look more into Davies, David Bowie's music and see how that inspires um, my own sense of creativity with fashion. So as far as the highlights of the show I think Bergen's parka it looks like a classic parka it was really well sewn according to the judges. I think Jill's transformation challenge read as a at red as country like I said before, more country goer, the country concert goer than a, an actual star, but it does read country. And so did Christian's um, outfit as well. 
I think that Jill's flame, flame dress to me was a highlight of the program as well. And um, as far as the low lights though, I think again, on the other end of it, Jill, her parka didn't end up be being completed. And um, she's, as she said in the outro to that, she goes, it's something that could have been done with her fabric, just not in that amount of time. And then I think that Angela's skirt and the transformation, I didn't like it. It didn't read country and it was, it kind of looked awkwardly put together. And then Manny's transformation um, challenge was also a little bit of a, of a low light just because the sleeves were really long. But whereas, uh, whereas as I said, I don't think a guitarist could to wear those sleeves. I think she's really re she's really um, forgetting that singers don't have to, people who just sing don't have to worry about whether or not their sleeves come over their hands as much. I, it could be pulled off, but overall her transformation challenge with the long sleeves on the on the flare jeans, while it was genius, wasn't one of the, uh, was more of a low light than a highlight. So as far as agreeing with the decisions for the week, uh, the... Annie's blazer was picked as the garment of the week. Uh, congratulations to Annie. That's absolutely wonderful. I did not expect that. I wouldn't disagree with any of the comments or that it deserves garment of the week. I just wasn't overwhelmed by her particular garment this week. And so I didn't really expect it to be the one chosen. Also, in terms of the decisions, is it was it became Angela's time to go home. I think as you watch the show, you realized more and more that she was going to be the one who was taken off the program because of the struggle she had from the very beginning, the pattern challenge, the transformation challenge, and then the comments that they gave her on the made to measure just, it was kind of heartbreaking in the end, but she just didn't make the comeback she needed in the made to measure to overcome the downfall of the pattern challenge or the transformation challenge. So how do you feel about this week's episode? What were your favorite garments? And um, it is getting close to the end now. Do you have any bets on who you think will take the overall prize? You don't, don't worry, you don't have to tell me. I'm just, we're down to six people now. So it's really exciting, it's really interesting to see what's going on. So if you enjoyed seeing my review, be sure to click on the like button, click on the like. And if you want to see what else will be coming on my channel, then subscribe and click on notifications. Thanks for watching All Things Maya. My name's Maya, and I will see you next time.